eight months of the year, those bike lanes are virtually unused. We're not Amsterdam. We're not even Toronto. You can't use those cities to compare to one where winter is this severe. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is George Schlackig. The one and only. And I'm an avid cyclist. That isn't always easy in Edmonton, Alberta, where I live. But today, I'm here to report on some great news. First of all, though, a bit of background information. Over the past couple of years, the city of Edmonton has developed what they call the bike plan. The bike plan was developed in collaboration with the general public. It's meant to create better conditions for residents to use their bicycles for transportation, no matter what season. Great efforts were made to allow the public to participate, including some workshops where the objectives of the bike plan were established from a resident's perspective. Shortcomings of existing bike routes were identified along with possible ways of improving them. The bike plan targets five main goals for Edmonton's future, and they're all exciting. Let me run them by you really quickly. The first one is about reducing emissions. Bicycles don't have exhaust. It's that simple. Number two is to rebuild existing land and infrastructure like roads to adapt to changing needs in the future. I think that means that there'll probably be more bikes and we'll have to create safe spaces for people to use them. The third one is about creating compact districts that will allow people to do 50% of all their trips by active means, basically walking and cycling. That seems quite ambitious when compared to today where it's only 23%. Number four is about affordability. The bike plan aims to make cycling and public transport viable and cost-effective options for general transportation. And then finally, number five aims to make Edmonton more competitive when it comes to attracting talent and businesses. The city actually recognizes that cycling plays a role here. That is so important and I think it's a big change from the way it used to be and the way most of Edmonton was built. Regardless of all the benefits of this great bike plan, especially in a large city like Edmonton, there's still a lot of opposition. Some people see it as an attack on their favorite mode of transportation, their car. It's understandable at first glance. Most people owe significant amounts of money on their cars. The cost of operating them is likely their highest monthly expense besides rent or mortgage. They want to get the most bang for their buck, including fuel taxes and registration, perceived to be the main sources of funding for building and maintaining roads. Their costs aren't going down, so why would any of that funding be shared with a few selfish cyclists? Bike lanes have to go somewhere, so now the city wants to build them on roads, benefiting a few cyclists who aren't even paying gas taxes, registration or insurance. However, gas taxes and registration fees don't really pay for the roads in Edmonton. The general budget does, and it comes from a variety of sources. We all pay taxes, and a huge part of that goes into roads. Funding a bike plan costs a small fraction of that, with a great return for society, if you ask me. But up until recently, Edmonton's bike plan was not on the list of projects that would receive proper funding in the next budget cycle, which covers some five years or so. No one is talking about taking funding away from roads. But spending on bike lanes is often viewed as equivalent to that, even though it has potential to take traffic off those roads, improving traffic flow for drivers overall. Some people refuse to see those benefits. I've done some digging around and found an interesting letter to the editor in a recent issue of the Edmonton Journal. Here it is for your entertainment. Just once I'd like to see this analysis done on a per-user basis. Of course, there are far fewer kilometers of bike lanes than overall kilometers of roadways, so it's a small percentage of the road budget. 
There's also far fewer cyclists using those bike lanes than there are drivers using the roadways too, so the only real comparison method is to work on a per user basis. Once you start doing that, the eight months of the year, those bike lanes are virtually unused, start to become pretty expensive on a per user basis. Even at peak usage, our roadways move far more people per hour than the bike lanes do. But it's when those lanes are empty and moving, well, nobody for months and months and months that their relative value starts to plummet. We're not Amsterdam. We're not even Toronto. You can't use those cities to compare to one where winter is this severe. Sign blah blah blah, I won't name it. Probably some fake name anyways. The Edmonton Journal publishes this, making it look like this is an example of a well-informed citizen's genuine opinion. This is shameful because this guy apparently knows nothing about cycling and the many people who use bicycles for trips of all kind year-round, even here in Edmonton. He would likely complain about all the traffic and scream for more roads to be built if they all suddenly stopped cycling and started driving cars because rush hour would be much worse. Even on the coldest days you will see people riding their bikes in Edmonton. The only time you won't is after a big snowfall when the bike lanes haven't been cleared yet. Of course, cyclists on a bike lane never look anything like motorized traffic jams. Bikes are quiet, small, and have a minimal impact on the environment. A road full of cars looks like it's moving a ton of people, but in reality, it's just that their vehicles take up a lot of space. So much that traffic slows to a crawl, even when there are relatively few people involved. Bicycles are a great choice of transportation, and they're growing in popularity. The only thing that stands in the way is the lack of safe infrastructure. Edmonton has been lagging behind in that regard. Well, now finally to the good news. This past Friday, City Council voted on the funding for the bike plan. Funding in the amount of $100 million was approved over the next five years. Phew! The guy who wrote that letter to the journal is probably wondering how this could have happened because he didn't see a single cyclist anywhere in the city on Friday. That could be because so many of them attended the council meeting displaying their bike helmets for all the councillors to see. The councillors also received many letters from concerned residents who wanted to see the bike plan properly funded. Bike lanes cost far less to build and maintain than roadways for motorized traffic. They also allow people to choose a superior mode of transportation, freeing up space on the road for those who must drive. Edmonton might just rival Amsterdam for becoming a truly bicycle-friendly city in the near future. Even when it's minus 20 degrees Celsius, the right gear can make cycling a pleasure, if only it's safe to do so. Some of Edmonton's future bike lanes are already past the design phase. An example is 132nd Avenue. There's a series of videos here on YouTube that show the future designs of this road. You can find one right there. But for your convenience, I will link all of them in the description. There's reason to celebrate in Edmonton because some amazing projects are finally becoming reality. I'm not sure how Edmonton compares to other cities, but this is part of why I'm sharing all this. Please leave me your comments. What is it like in your city? Is cycling safe year-round? Is Edmonton on track to becoming a leader or just following a growing trend? Ultimately, it probably doesn't matter. As cyclists, we are gaining influence everywhere. I'm very hopeful for a bright future where you can ride your bike without fear of getting run over. I hope you enjoyed my little talk. If so, hit the like button and check out this video I made about winter cycling in Edmonton some time ago. Hopefully rides like that will soon be a thing of the past. See you soon.